Texas today has a senator in Washington who can speak with authority. John used to say, my name is Tower, but I don't. But John Goodwin Tower launched a political revolution that transformed Texas into a two-party state. In 1961, Tower, a little-known professor of political science at Midwestern University in Wichita Falls, shocked the nation as he emerged victorious from a crowded field to claim Lyndon Johnson's Senate seat. At 35, he was the youngest member of the Senate, and more importantly, he was the first Republican senator from Texas since Reconstruction. Good morning. This is Judy Weiss speaking to you once again from Washington, D.C. Jack the Giant Killer has come to town. The Jack is Senator John Goodwin Tower, who has just been elected senator from the great state of Texas. And the Giant is the idea that no Republican can be elected from any southern or southwestern state. The son and grandson of Methodist ministers, John's values were shaped at the family dinner table. It was here that his unwavering commitment to conservative principles was born. With degrees from Southwestern, SMU, and graduate work at the London School of Economics, he was quite a scholar. But he was an academic with a practical mind. He had an intuitive understanding of power and politics. And he went to Washington determined to make a difference. He fought hard to preserve right to work laws. If I were an industrial worker, I'd want to join a trade union and I'd be active in it. But I wouldn't want to be told I had to join. A man shouldn't be made to pay tribute to earn his daily bread. As a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, he toured Vietnam and he held a deep and abiding respect for our men and women in uniform. And he was a tireless champion on their behalf. Now, sometimes it seems every generation of Americans is called on to make sacrifices in blood to preserve freedom. As I visited the field hospitals, I saw sights I'll never forget. And yet the wounded men I saw understand, just as the American people must understand, that we're making our stand in Vietnam today to preclude a fight on a much broader front at greater cost later on. He also understood the importance of the oil and gas industry, both to Texas and to the nation and he worked hard to deregulate pricing to stimulate exploration and development. I'm cautiously optimistic that we will finally deregulate the price of natural gas at the wellhead, and I'll work to remove oil price controls as soon as possible. And even in the early 60s, Tar recognized the folly of uncontrolled deficit spending. I think the Congress should discipline itself to cut deficit spending because deficit spending is, is the principal cause of the reduction of the buying power of your money. In those days, it was often lonely to be a conservative, but John Tower was unyielding in pursuit of his vision. Many Democrats thought Tower would be a one-term senator, that his victory had been a fluke. And indeed, in those days, the joke was you could fit the entire Texas Republican Party in a phone booth with room to spare. But John Tower was the first Republican who could reach across party lines. His appeal was simple. His values were our values. Oh, beautiful, our heroes proved in liberating strife. John Tower was truly the father of the Texas Republican Party. He recruited candidates and campaigned tirelessly for them throughout the state. But more importantly, he was the standard bearer of a new conservative movement. Three times he went into battle against well-financed Democratic opponents. Three times he emerged with a victory. He turned back Wagner Carr in 66, Barefoot Sanders in 72, Bob Kruger in 78. Suddenly, it was fashionable to be a Republican in Texas. And the seeds that Tower and his loyal supporters had planted came to full fruition in the 80s and 90s as Republican candidates scored victories in record numbers. 
Tower served 24 years in the Senate. He was a member of the Budget Committee, the Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committee, and chairman of the influential Republican Policy Committee. But Tower's real legacy can be seen in his work both as member and as chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Tower believed that lasting peace is attained through a strong national defense. He recognized that freedom came with a price, but believed that price was worth paying. The protection of our security, our vital interests abroad, the support of our well-motivated foreign policy objectives, and the continuing quest for freedom is our highest calling. Thank you. Working with President Reagan, Tower was one of the principal architects of the military buildup that toppled communism in Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union. He understood the importance of advanced weapon systems, and his foresight was proven in Operation Desert Storm. In 1983, Tower held a press conference to announce his retirement at the end of his term. It was time to come home. I'm anxious to get back to Texas. I love Texas very much. I regard it as the best place in the world. And I'm looking forward to return. Though retired from the Senate, he was still committed to public service. In 1985, he served as U.S. Ambassador to the negotiations in Geneva of strategic nuclear and space arms. And in 1986, he chaired the President's Special Review Board, more commonly known as the Tower Commission, investigating the Iran-Contra affair. In 1988, President Bush nominated John Tower to become Secretary of Defense, a job denied him by a democratically controlled Senate. Tower accepted his defeat with characteristic grace and dignity. It is time for the bitterness rancor and anger to fade. And for those elements of government who have been involved in the confirmation process, to unite and be about the people's business. But I depart from this place at peace with myself, knowing that I have given a full measure of devotion to my country. And indeed, John Goodwin Tarr had the steely determination to take both the good and the bad life had to offer. To understand the strength of his character, one need only look where he looked for inspiration. St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, chapter 5. We glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worth patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And then there was Travis's letter from the Alamo in which he said, I shall never surrender our retreat. John Tower never surrendered. He never retreated. In over 30 years of public service, he left behind an unmatched legacy of accomplishment, integrity, commitment, and devotion. John, we will never forget you. We owe you a debt we can never repay. You know, God done shed his grace on thee. His name was Tar. And he did. Yes, he did. Heavy brotherhood. From 